Alright, welcome to another video in our No Code Fundamental Pillars series. Now, we're going to be combining a couple of things we've learned already by making our own API. And what we're going to be combining is firstly the CRUD methodology that we looked at earlier. And we're also going to be combining knowledge we've got of things like webhooks, um, reading API documentation and more. Now, this is just intended to be a, a very, very quick run through of how it works um, rather than a complete walkthrough of how to build a fully functioning API end to end. We'll do more videos on that later in our content library, but this is just really to give you an idea of your starting point for building your own API and how you can think about it as well. Now, I'm going to refer back to our favorite database. Uh, you know, we talked before about having a t-shirt e-commerce company and within that we would have a customers table with the various customers buying things from us um, and orders table with an order number, date placed, items, etc. And also an inventory as well. Um, and within that inventory we've got the different items and how many we've got in stock. So what we are going to do, we're, we've got this on Airtable at the minute, what we're going to do is we're going to use a different tool called Xano to build this into an API and then I'm going to show you just how you can query it exactly the way that your users would do it live. Now there's a few reasons you might want an API um, but one of the things that you can do is if you already have an app and perhaps Airtable is the database or perhaps something else is a database and um, you've got a mobile side, a front end, etc. That's brilliant, but you might also want an app on top of that. And so rather than beginning from scratch, uh, with tools like Xano, you can combine your uh, your database from, for example, Adalo, from Airtable, etc. to just uh, import the data you've got, uh, keep that kind of live and synced and really just build an API on top of it from there. So let's take a look at Xano and I'm just going to minimize myself into the corner, put myself up here. So I've just completely reset my Xano account to log in. So if you were logging in, this is the first thing you will see. Now I'm going to say I'm advanced, I know what I'm doing with Xano um, to some extent. Uh, and it's also going to ask me what front end I'm using and that's because Xano has pre-built integrations with many uh, no-code tools like Adalo, like Bubble, AppGyver, React Studio, Webflow, etc. I'm going to say I haven't decided yet because I'm just building an API. You also have the ability to hook uh, your data up to something like Airtable, to a spreadsheet, etc. Um, so that you can import it in advance, which is exactly what we are going to do. Um, so I'll just call this, uh, yeah, let's just call it Nile Freighter. In fact, we'll call it NoCode uh, Demo Workspace. We'll hit continue. Now, you immediately get a couple of options because essentially what Xano is, is not just um, an API builder, it's a full backend builder. It can take care of that entire backend um, workflow sort of thing, but it does it by building an API from scratch on top of your data that you can build workflows into kind of each API call and essentially you can use it as your own API um, in the background even if you never make it public. So. Uh, you've got a few different kind of options you can pick, but what we're going to do is import from Airtable. Now, this is going to ask me for my API key. The advice I gave you before is never show anybody your API key. And for that reason, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to put my API key in, select my Airtable database, and then I'll unpause it and bring you right back to where we were. All right, we are back again. And uh, this time I've, I've kind of set in the Airtable API key. I've picked which database I want to bring in. And you'll notice I've immediately been presented uh, with the various different tables that I've already got in here. Um, and Xano is now going to let me import them and uh, try them out. So let's hit continue. Now, Xano's pretty good. It comes up with a lot of pre-built kind of stuff that you can integrate. So if you want to work with Slack, you can do it. If you want to work with Twilio, with SendGrid, um, if you want to start taking payments with Stripe, you can do all that as well. We're not going to bother with that because we're not building a, um, a, a back-end per se. We're just focusing on the API part. So the way, the way this kind of works is you've got a database and you've got your API. Your API is essentially where you... Um, where you build out the various bits of logic, um, but Xano can do a lot of it for you because what we're trying to build right now is a, an API based entirely off our data. Now, if we look here in our database, obviously we've imported it from Airtable, so it's brought everything in. You know, let's have a look at the inventory table, for example, and we can see that we've got all of our different items, our blue t-shirt, our white hoodie, black t-shirt, etc. 
Uh, we've also got a note of uh, the items in terms of are they in stock, how much is in stock, and we've even got the link back to the orders that we have here. Um, so it's a really, really cool way uh, of just bringing that data in and looking at it. Uh, and again, if we go back and just look at something like customers, all our customer details are there. You know, we've got Jane Smith, we've got John Smith. Um, the order has mixed around a little bit. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm sure there's a reason for it. it looks like it's maybe back to front. Um, but fundamentally, everything that's in our air table is available here in our database. So let's take a look at our inventory and I'm going to show you what we can do. So we, we essentially can... Um, Let's say we're going to start an API for looking up our inventory. We can click into our API. We can start a new API group. We're going to call this our public API. And it will immediately say, okay, no API endpoints are found. But what it will do is give us this base URL. So you remember the kind of base URL we used for the Webflow API in earlier videos, which was uh, shown here. And that was, you know, api.webflow.com. Well, Xano is going to give you an equivalent. Now, it doesn't quite say api.com, although you can set up a custom domain later. At the minute, it gives you this kind of, um, you know, complicated uh, URL. So we're going to play with that. Let me just grab that. I'm going to go back to Hopscotch. If this isn't familiar to you, then I definitely recommend watching the API making a request video first because uh, we used this tool there. But I've just pasted that in, so it doesn't look quite look as pretty as api.webflow.com. Um, but as I say, you can set that up. This is just a kind of Xano default testing domain. So let's add an endpoint. Now, this is where our CRUD knowledge comes in especially handy. We've got a lot of different things we can create an endpoint for. You know, Xana will let us build authentication uh, endpoints for doing things like signing with Facebook, signing with Google. It'll also let us upload various pieces of content. But perhaps most interestingly, we've got CRUD database operations. And as you'll remember from the CRUD methodology lesson, that is create a new record, read a record, update an existing record, and delete an existing record. So... When we pop right in here, immediately we can pick which table we want to build this API endpoint for, let's say our inventory. And all of these should look familiar to you from previous lessons we've, uh, we've done looking at APIs. We can immediately choose to um, get a default, you know, get uh, the whole inventory, get a single uh, piece in the inventory by the inventory ID, post to create, etc. Let's just hit get, keep it simple. Um, so we can just put a description here like list all inventory items. Now you can set up authentication um, with the option down the bottom so you can do things like API tokens or open off. I'm not going to bother with all that, that's something you can play around with yourself. But essentially Zapier has a workflow builder. Now it's probably worth saying at this point Zapier is definitely aimed at a semi-technical um, audience rather than a completely non-technical audience. In general, building an API is not the easiest thing for a completely non-technical person. I wouldn't advise starting there. Um, you know, if it is for you, feel free to dive into Xano. But just a little bit of a recommendation that it can get quite complicated. You know, if I start hitting add new entry here, I've got all sorts of things I can do around about data manipulation, database requests, and you'll see it's using proper programming terms like arrays, objects, um, you know, loops, if statements, etc. So everything that we talked about in our workflows lesson, you can do in Xano. I mean, it, it is incredibly empower, uh, powerful. It is what we call Turing complete, which um, is a phrase that means you can build essentially anything you like uh, with a specific tool. Xano is one of the only no-code tools that's Turing complete. So you can build anything, but the good thing is we already have this here. Uh, now again, this is a little bit kind of programmery speak, but it says query all records from the inventory. In other words, what happens is when you call this API, it reads everything from the inventory and sends it back. Now, when we see phrases like return as self and var model, that's when it gets a little bit programmery for me. Um, if you want to change what your API does, perhaps in terms of, for example, validating data, etc., you can do that. But the good news is this API point is now, or endpoint is now built and ready. We can just hit go back and we immediately get it there. Now that's pretty cool, but let me show you something even cooler. When I hit documentation, I'm just going to right click and open that in the new tab. Xano will actually start to generate API documents for you. Oops, don't know what happened there. Let me go back. There we go. That's working now. I kind of lost a uh, Lost the element of surprise there. So 
if I just move the face out of the way again, right now we've only got one endpoint, so it's only going to list one thing that we can do. Uh, and you can see it's kind of talking about the various different errors, etc., that you can get. Now, you've got to do a little bit of setup to get things showing up like parameters, but it gives us a basic idea of how that kind of works. You know, we'll start to generate that, um, all those inputs, etc., basically by default for us. So, if we go ahead, we've got our, uh, our endpoint already, we've got that in hopscotch, we now know that we can go to slash inventory and run a get request. So let's just do exactly that. So I'm going to hit slash inventory. I'm going to type that, I'm going to send that in. We've got a 200 response. And immediately you can see, we just built an API to query the data that we had in Airtable via Xano. So I can see my black t-shirt, I can see I've got five in stock, I can see I've got a green t-shirt, white t-shirt, etc, etc. That is really, really cool, really powerful stuff. And of course, you can start adding as many endpoints as you like. So we can go, right, let's do another one for inventory. Um, you know, let's start looking at a single piece. So look at a specific inventory item. So we can now go and read something specific by using the ID. Um, now this again already builds this in by default. Zapier is accepting um, the inventory ID as an input. It is then going to look up the um, inventory item as an input. Again, it's doing a lot of complicated stuff here. You don't really need to understand. This is the definition of visual programming. But we're just building a basic API of our data. We don't need to get too complex at this stage. So let's just go back. All right, that's good. That's ready to go. I mean, it literally is as simple as this. So if I now just say, okay, let's check an ID. Um, all right, we've got ID two as ID uh, two as a white hoodie. So if we go to inventory, now this is a tiny database, which is why we don't have massive, you know, strings of text and, and, and numbers put together to look this up like we do in Webflow. This is just our database. It's only got a few records in it. So if I now search number two, uh, I'm going to get back exactly that, the white hoodie. Now I've got a bunch of information. For example, this is also telling me uh, what the ID is for Airtable. So if I was to look that up on Airtable's API, it's going to return that inventory information as well. Really, really powerful stuff. And that, so that just kind of starts to give you a bit of a flavor of how this works. I mean, there's various other things you can do. Let's, you know, let's add um, another endpoint simply for creating data. So, yep, let's say post to the inventory, create a new inventory item, hit save. Okay, so this is telling me that it's going to be accepting um, a timestamp uh, for when we created it, although it'll also auto-generate that itself. Um, it's going to accept text for the item name, uh, it's going to accept the number of items in stock, uh, and it can also accept a list of the IDs that um, of the, the orders from the order table that this is attached to. Now, I'm not going to mess about with all of that because we could spend a lot of time just purely trying to make that request look right when actually it's already got the documentation for us. So let's just go ahead and try posting now. So We'll just take that little ID number out. We don't want that. We've just got this URL. And uh, what we're going to do this time is switch this over to a post request. I'm going to move my big face out of the way yet again. Um, so we're going to switch this over to a post request. We're going to add a few parameters in and we're going to see if a request works. So I think one of the fields was item underscore name. So let's call this a... Um, Rainbow T-shirt. There you go. Uh, I think another one was a uh, the, um, the item stock. Was it called? I think it was called that. I ah, will check it and see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter too much. So I think that was called that. Um, and now it did accept that as a decimal rather than a integer. If you remember that from our data types, that means we have to do something like 6.0 rather than just 6. An integer is a whole number. A decimal is a, um, a you know, a, well, a number with a decimal point in it, obviously. Um, you can change that. That's just the way that Xano appears to have imported it. You can go and change that field to an integer or whatever you want it to be. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But let's just hit post and see if this works. Now we might get an error. I've not really checked documentation, but no, there you go. Uh, so we've just created our item. It's now got the item ID of A. It's got the rainbow t-shirt. It looks like something did go wrong putting our um, items in stock into the uh, into the database. Uh, 
we'll have to play about with that and just figure out exactly what caused that. But um, if we go ahead and pop into Xano, if we pop into our database, go into inventory, now we should see a rainbow t-shirt in there, and there you go. Now I'm not 100% sure what's caused it to not show up with the items in stock. Uh, one thing that we could try doing is just manually um, adding our data in there. So rather than using uh, Hopscotch's parameter boxes, it might just be that um, we need to type it up. Let's have a little look and see. I could be wrong, but we'll just try this just to give you an idea of kind of how Xan was working, but also how you can just debug some of this stuff. Because the reason I think that came up is null. Null means it doesn't exist. That means it hasn't saved our data. Now we saw in Xano it specifically asked for um, a, a decimal for the item stock number. So it's a little bit weird it hasn't saved it. But presumably that's because Hopscotch has sent it as a piece of text or a string rather than a, um, a, a number. Because remember I said computers are really, really strict about this stuff. Um, and you can see there, uh, you know, it's specifying the item name should be sent as a string, the items in stock should be sent as a number. So we'll try that. Now, the good thing is, this is, again, completely automatically created documentation. I can just copy and paste that, just like we did uh, previously with Webflow, and I can just paste it straight in there. And uh, we're going to say, we're going to get rid of created at, because we never used that parameter before and it worked just fine. We're also going to get rid of orders, because I don't want to make... Uh, any orders for this item at the minute. So we're going to take rid of that comma, which will fix our JSON. And then last time, let's say that there are eight items in stock, and let's call this a yellow t-shirt. This might work, this might not work. I'm trying this out on the fly. Let's hit send and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Now it's saying items in stock are eight. This is why I kind of said it's important that an API confirms everything back to you. You know, if you remember right back to the first documentation video, I know it was a long one, but when I looked at the Twilio API, one of the problems, or one of the things I pointed out is that quite often if you send data to an API, it will send you back whatever data you need, but it will typically also send you the data that you sent so that you can confirm where things went wrong. Because previously we could tell that items in stock didn't work because this came up null, but now that we can, now we can see it has worked because it's coming up with eight. And the reason it's worked is because clearly when we were adding in uh, parameters manually, uh, when we're adding them in here, it looked like it was putting those in as a piece of text, as a string. This is why you've always got to watch your variables. I'm not quite sure if there's a way to stop that um, happening with the parameters in uh, Hopscotch, but the best way to do it is just go into the raw input, type up the JSON yourself, or like we did, because we're no coders, just copy it and paste it in. Now, while I'm on my high horse, I better just double check this has actually worked in the database. Otherwise, I'm going to look very silly. But it looks like it has. So where our rainbow t-shirt didn't work, our yellow t-shirt did work. It's put A in, which was our requested stock. And uh, essentially, we've just created our own API for uh, working with inventory. So that's really just a quick overview of how this works with Xano. Um, clearly, as you can see, the platform has got a ton of power under the hood. If you're semi-technical, this could be um, a great thing for you. Um, especially as it can handle the full backend experience, database, API workflows. But if you're just trying to build an API as per, you know, the, the, the kind of context of this video, um, you don't want to get too complicated. You know, very clearly you can just come in here, um, you can connect your Airtable database. I think you can also connect, as I said earlier, a, a Dallo, uh, perhaps even Webflow, etc. as well. And you can just start mashing that add API endpoint button, adding all sorts of different stuff in here. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five different operations available per um, per different database. So you could easily spend half an hour on here and create an API um, with 15 different, you know, endpoints to manipulate your data, assuming it looked like this and had three tables. So just really flexible tool, incredible what you can do with it. If you're looking to, to try and build an API, highly recommend giving this one a shot. Thanks very much and we'll see you in the next video.